Hi everyone, it's Nick here from Turnip Stuffish. I've got a new tutorial for you today. Now, I have a confession to make. When I recorded this tutorial, I didn't put the mic on properly, so I'm doing the re voice recording afterwards, so bear with me if I'm a bit lagging, a bit behind. Um, I've got an A4 document, 300 dpi as usual, and right now what I'm doing is picking a background colour, which I'm going to fill with my bucket tool. So I normally pick a an off grey, um, I'm going to do a portrait today, so I'm going to go straight into painting. Um, I'm going to do a colour portrait, so I'm going to pick my base colour. Um, you spend a bit of time doing this always, just to, uh, to build your colour palettes. So I'm going to put my base colour down, and I've got my pressure sensitivity on my brush. So when I press harder, the colour is darker, so I've got the flow working. Um, if you're not sure how to set up your brush, you probably should come to one of our workshops and I'll, I'll show you how to set it up properly. But having the brush set up in the correct way is quite important when you start mixing a colour palette like this. Now what I'm picking is, I've picked a lighter value there. I went into the, a little bit of yellow and a lighter value, and I've gone over lightly my first colour. So I can now mix the colours together. Because remember, with this brush, when I press lightly, it only pulls an element of the colour out. So you'll see me again going over the colours with the lighter colour and picking the new colour that's mixed. So this is a great way of building a colour palette where all the colours are, are mixed together between each other. I'm going to pick a darker colour now. So I need to be careful. I don't want to go into the black. I don't just want to um, add grey and black to the colour, I want to make a darker colour. So I'm, I'm coming into the red a bit. And now I can put this on the screen, I'll press hard to get my darker colour, and then lightly between the colours to get my the mid value. Okay, so that kind of works. I might need a, a redder colour for the nose and the lips in a minute, but we'll come back to that. I like to work with a kind of shadow colour that's either a, a blue or a green. So I'm now picking a, a darker value. And obviously this blue will be very strong. I'm not going to use this, but by mixing that blue into the skin colour, I start to create uh, a tone of value, a colour that's, that's hinted or tinted towards that blue. So there's always an aspect of that first colour in all these colours. So I'm, I'm purely mixing all the time. I'm doing the same with a green now. So I picked a green. It's quite quite a strong green. But when I mix it into my other colours, it will come between my my original skin tone. So in terms of my highlights, I, I don't have a strong enough highlight. So I've, I've just grabbed one more highlight there. Right, a nose colour, a lip colour. I'm going to come down into the red value a bit, being careful not to come straight vertically down, it'll be too too dark. But I need blood to show in, in the nose and the cheeks and the lips, so I just wanted a little bit more red. And uh, I'm going to mix it with several of the colours just to see all the variations I get. Right, let's start painting. Bigger brush, pick my main skin colour, and I'm just going to just quite with a large brush, quite relaxed, just going to paint in a large oval shape. Okay, so remember because this brush is pressure sensitive and got the flow on, the colour isn't going to be 100% pure all the time. As I build up, that's important, but with this first layer, I probably just want to try and make sure it's a fairly strong, equal layer of colour. So I've got to press reasonably hard. I'm working off a photograph for reference to help me help me draw because this is always like a practicing exercise. This is my drawing more for 2019. I'm now going to put in a tube for the neck and I'm going to drop the shoulders in so I've got something to work off. I have a little bit of a cold today so excuse me if uh, when I'm speaking I'm mumbling more than usual. So I'm just going to block in my, I'm just blocking in the shoulders, give me a shape to work off. 
let's start building in some some shadow areas, some drop shadow areas. Um, with my darker value now, I'm actually going to put in the the eye holes, like like the skull. So this is a technique I've seen; it works really well. I've just put in the the eye holes. If it were a skull, I put in. I'm going to put some warmth in the nose, the base of the nose where the blood is closest to the skin, basically. And I'm going to put in a value just around where the lips are, which I can go back and tweak. But it's again, there's going to be more warmth in that area. A little bit of drop of shadow under the chin. And this character's got strong cheekbones, so I'm putting in a little bit of shape on those cheekbones. I'm being quite relaxed, yeah? I'm just going to paint over this and work it up slowly so you can see my first brush strokes. Really are quite relaxed and quite abstract in a way. Right, I'm just going to make sure. I think I'm just making sure here that the angle across the eyes and the nose and the mouth are equal. I picked actually one of my darkest values because I'm going to draw the eyes now. So uh, I, find, I still find it easier at this stage to draw the shape of the eye. And then I can fill that in afterwards. So I'm going to curve around the oval of the eye. I'm going to put in the tear duct. Bit of mark making for the underneath of the eye. And same on the other side. So I need to think about how uh, that it's parallel across the face, but slightly curved and that, that was off. That line was off how it started that. So this line now I'm making sure comes across from the other eye. I just dropped the tear duct in first of all and I made sure the space between the tear ducts was is equal to the distance of the actual eye. So something like this, that's kind of working. Right, let's put the iris in, the coloured section, and we'll mark in the pupils in a second as well. Just make sure the eyelid is clipping the top of the iris. And it's, I'm just pulling it just off the bottom of the eyelid. Just need to thin this out a bit. I still think this eye is a little wider on this side at the moment, but I can tweak that later if need be. Okay. I'm just going to start thinking about the nostrils and the top of the nose. Quite often I will draw a shape for the top plane of the nose and the other nostril. Now this looks a bit twisted here, so I think I'm going to put in a center line to help me make sure I don't get this twisted now. So remember that the eyes, the nose and the mouth are probably reasonably parallel, depending on how much of a face I'm pulling. And then I've got to get the horizontal working on this one straight down. I don't want to twist it, it's all going to, those measurement lines are quite important. So I'm drawing in the top of the nose and just suggesting the nostril lines. Now I'm going to start marking out the the lip shapes. Gives me something to, to build onto in a minute. I will measure that down from the nostrils to, to get me how to get that the correct width. I will come diagonally from the nostrils. You can see that I'm color picking from the, the colors on the picture all the time as well. This is a strong color, but I know that I'm going to paint all over this in a bit. So this color will vanish over time. I'm not too worried. Now, knowing me, I probably painted the chin too long. I always seem to do that in my drawings. I'm not sure why but I can correct it later. I'm going to pick a an off-white. I'm going to block in the eyes now. Remember when we look at an image, we should, well, we'll be looking at the eyes because we communicate through our eyes. So if I just build these up a bit, that might help this drawing. I didn't pick a pure white. I picked a slightly off-white. A pure white would be too bright.
picking the eye color that I'd drawn with, I'm now just going to block in the iris color. Remember to always kind of go from the outside to a point and imagine the pupil is the point in the middle of the eye. Try and make your mark making come into the pupil. Now I have gone and picked a uh, pupil color now. I didn't pick black, I picked a very dark, I used the same bluey color I had, bluey green, but I, I went to a darker value, but I didn't go to black. I'm keeping my eye shines at this stage on the same side. Yeah, my light source should be coming in the same side. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this very dark color just to give me a darkened rim around the iris. So it's stronger. Okay, that's starting to work. Those eyes are starting to stare across at, across at us. Right, let's put a bit of eyeliner in, or a bit of eye detail. So I'm gonna darken it on the outside of the eye. And a little bit underneath, not too much, just building shape. I'm just suggesting some eyelashes there. I just colour picked that, the white I had, and I'm actually working in the shine so it stands out a little bit more. Just building these eyes up. If the eyes are strong, that will help pull the image together as I say because that's when we talk to each other we will actually look each other in the eye and communicate that way so you're trying to make sure those eyes are as strong as you can so I'm mixing the dark value I had with the that original darker blue color so I'm mixing some different values in there just to get some darker tones I'm going to start building some form shadows. So I know which side the light's coming from because of the shine in my eyes. So now you just see me building around the forms. A little bit of shape under the eye for the eyelids. Building up the different forms. So this side of the nose is going to be more in shadow the other side because that's where the light's hitting. Again I'm, I'm being quite relaxed about this at the moment I'm not worrying too much I'm not I will try and neaten this up but at this stage it's really just blocking in being really relaxed with your painting a little bit abstract I guess and just blocking in areas that you know that you can work up later on. Right I've got to build the other side there's going to be a little bit of cast shadow here a little, bit, a little bit of shape around this eyelid, a little bit of cast shadow under the eyebrow. Okay, maybe a little bit under the cheekbone. And it kind of cheekbone comes into the nose, and we've got the temple here. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to drop the temple in. There'll be more shadow on the other side. And make sure my cheekbone feels the same. So it comes into the nose. I'm just making sure that curve works about the same on each side. Quite like this darker colour. So I'm just building in underneath the chin. Now there's a good chance I've still made the chin too big. We'll come back to that. But I'm just going to drop in this drop shadow, cast shadow. And then I need to thin out, thin out that face. So I'm looking at how wide it is from the eye to the outside of the head on both sides. I'm trying to make sure it feels similar. Right, I'm going to pick a redder colour for the one of the words. So I'm thinking about the areas which of the blood is closer to the skin. So I'm just blocking in some flat colours for the lips. And I'm sure I'll struggle with these lips lots and lots as I just build them up. But that's drawing, isn't it? This is an exercise. So I'm just you know, trying to draw more in 2019, get more used to these shapes. And try and get better at it. Gonna put some warmth into the tip of the nose. 
there should be some on the nostrils really as well a little bit underneath the eyes so on the eyelids just a little bit of warmth there just building up areas slowly so I'm just now just dropping in the other side of the nose so I can I can feel the form when I'm looking at it I can start to feel the whole form of the nose which I can build up slowly Picked a softer colour. You see, I'm thinning that gin out again. So I got a softer value, and I was just darkening in the side of the chin. So the chin has a front plane, side plane, on either side. So I'm now working on the front plane of the chin, picking one of the stronger highlights, and building the rounded form. The light will catch the side of the nose just going to give me a highlight spot on the top of the nose and it's going to build around this nostril later on. Put a little bit of shape on the lips, there's lots of work to do there yet. And down underneath the nose here. But I've got to soften that. So I mix the two colours on the painting. Colour picking off the painting painting lightly on top, grabbing the new colour and mixing it together. It does feel quite long in here. You'll see that's a bit strong that colour. We'll soften that off. So again I'm colour picking my shadow colours and mixing on the painting and then finding a, a not so strong value and then just brushing in the different forms A little bit of shape up to the nose. A little bit of shape before it hits the cheekbone. And start working this big flat area on the forehead. So just picking in a lighter value, soft, softening it off, but just again being quite relaxed about the colours and just working in the whole side of the object because the light source was coming in this size the eyes the eyes were helping tell me that so I'm just pulling that light source in almost like a spherical object on this side and I'll, I'll work it up slowly and, and refine it okay it's feeling a bit long so I'm going to have to do something about it so I'm going to grab my lasso tool I'm going to get my lasso tool, marquee tool, and I'm going to grab the lips and I'm going to use my selection tool and I'm going to move them up. It's all looking a bit long down here, so I've got to correct the image. I've got to have the courage to go back and correct it. I think today you're going to see me doing a lot of this. So I'm kind of deciding, am I, am I happy with this? Is that high enough? And when I'm happy with it, I can press select, deselect. And that will move into position. And I can just paint out now the little gap I've created, the hole I've created. Colour pick the colours from the picture. So that feels a bit better. It's not as long between the nose and the lips. Um, I might have to come back and adjust this chin yet. But that's part of drawing, isn't it? It's going back, having the courage to kind of go back and correct the elements. Right, a little mistake in here. Now I've been painting on the wrong level briefly. So look, we all do it. So I think when I painted the hole, I painted on the background layer. So I'm just going to clean up my background layer quickly. It's not the end of the world. It's only a little area. Go back here and make sure I'm painting on the right level. There you are. We all do it. Easy peasy to fix. Done. Doesn't take very long. Got to make the chin smaller. Got to have the courage to keep analysing the image, measuring elements of it, and then correcting. Pull the neck up. We will build in the shadow colours.
Right, next stage. Gonna start putting in the form of the hair. So this is a this is a kind of redhead the picture I'm looking at. So I'm gonna pick I don't want a pure orange, I don't want a pure red, I don't want a pure brown. I'm trying to pick a value between that I can work off. But it's strong at the same time. Hello. You've just been introduced to Ziggy. Ziggy has had first breakfast and second breakfast, but I think would like third breakfast. So um, I'm going to pick my value. And I can now mix a color palette off this. So again, I'm going to pick, add a little bit more brown to it. So I've got a you know, redhead quite often has those darker values of brown in it, and I'm going to mix those color palettes together. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to bring some highlight colors, and again, I'm going to mix these colors. So I'm, I'm building another little color palette just for the hair. It doesn't take very long. It means now I will pick all the colors from this color palette. And a bit like I did with the skin, I'm going to use a, a bluer value mixed off the orange and I can get some shadow colors. Right, let's just put in, start putting in the, the general shape. Now I'm not making sure I didn't get too high. So I'm looking at the length of the nose, length to the lips, and I'm gauging where the height should be. For the hair. I'm just going to pull in the fringe. Zooming out a bit because I just want to be these big gestural lines to build this general shape. Comes down to the eye and then curves and waves and drops down behind the shoulder. On this side it curves over, little wave, drops down close to the eye and pulls away. Something like this. We have a, a fringe kind of wave here. Just gonna make sure it's thicker than my skull and pull my shape and curve it around the head. Gonna create the, the wave of the hair. Roll it around and it will go again over behind the neck. Right, let's start just blocking in some areas of uh, colour, something to work with. Now my, my brush marks for my hair should always should carry on in the flow of the hair, so the direction of the hair and how it works. Don't want to change that, it will, it will confuse, I think it will confuse the mark making of the drawing. So I'm just blasting in some, some shapes, some gestures, some flow of the hair, but in the direction that the hair is, is falling in and growing. Careful there, don't take my mark making. I'm still building these in clumps and pulling that the flow of that block of hair as it comes from the, the crown or the center, the parting. Gonna need to put some eyebrows, suggesting the eyebrows because it's looking very long in the top of the head right now. So I'm just putting in a base color, the same base color. It's a bit strong down here without any other colors in it, but we'll put this in for something to work on. And we can come back to it in time. Right, let's get one of my darker values. I've got to get an ear in here. So Putting in the shape, the rough shape for an ear for now. So in shadow, so it's quite dark back there. And then I use my darker, one of my brown 
and blue colours and I'm just building in some shadow lines to put some depth back there to drop drop all that value further back so the head stands out so I'm trying to keep it nice and dark still working my lines in the flow of the hair I'm going to use the same colour to start building elements of the flow on the hair on top. Adding a bit of variation to the eyebrows. So I knew where, where the light is coming, so I'm just pulling out a darker value from the parting. I want to get that darker again, I think. Give me something to work off. So right in the crown there, pulling out some darker motion. As I build this, I should still I should keep thinking about the form of the head all the time, the hair. So which side the light is hitting, which side is in shadow. And that will make the form of the hair work much better. Okay. This darker brown's working quite well. I can get a little bit more value and form and mark making on top of these other colours now. I think I'm just putting in a highlight. I think I'm talking about it feels quite long this head in the lower half of the head. So all the time I'm painting the hair, I'm looking at the whole picture, kind of analysing what I think I'm going to have to tweak in a minute. They're starting to come together now, just blocking in, so all the hair's been kind of blocked in with values. So I've got a thought about its form and the flow of the actual hair. It's still fairly relaxed, a little bit abstract, and that's okay. It's a painting, not a photograph. A little bit of the red back in. Building elements of the hair as it rolls from the fringe around the side. So it's like the clumps. Of, I've got to change some of these lines to help that form of the hair roll around the head and wrap behind. Okay, so the direction those lines go in become really important. Right, I'm going to build a little more form. I'm going to narrow the head again to the eye. I was getting too wide. Okay. Yeah, it's twisted down here. Let's get this value in. It's going to build a bit more form. We've got cast shadow from the hair, the form of shadow here. So still being fairly abstract. You can see the mouth is quite twisted at the moment. I've got to change that in a minute. And I can soften this again on the page by mixing between the colours. So taking a colour, painting it over another colour softly, and then colour picking those colours. Bit of car shadow. Gonna need much more on this side around this cheekbone. Getting a bit of warmth in those lips. I'm actually taking this out now. So it's the the line across the mouth wasn't parallel, doesn't feel parallel to the eyes and the nose, so it was twisting the mouth. So I'm trying to thin it out so I can rebuild it again. I guess when you, if you're quite relaxed with the painting and a little bit abstract it's 
it gives you more courage to be able to really paint whole areas out and correct it. So now I'm trying to make sure the sides of the mouth are kind of equally long on each side and that they feel at the same angle as the eyes and the nose. Right, just building in the darker values. Sec, creating a bit more form. A little bit of shape around this chin. The lips feel softer, they feel less twisted now. So it was that's starting to work a little bit better. You can see there's a lot of I'm often going back and correcting. It's defining the nostrils. building a warmer colour, getting a, a warmer pink for the lips to start to build them off the picture a bit. In the photograph I'm working with, she is wearing a kind of lip, uh, a lipstick, so I'm looking for values, it's not pure red, still got a bit of that, the hair colour in it in a way, but it's a red lipstick, so I'm just going to put this in, it's, it's going to be quite strong. Bring these lines around the form of the lip. That sometimes works. Get there in the end. How many times have we repainted these lips now? The fourth time. Just trying to build the shape. You think about its form as well and how the light's hitting it. I get a darker value right in the middle here. If I can pull this together. So all the time my darker values are getting darker slowly as I'm working this painting up. They get darker and darker. Picking some of that highlight from the eye and the nose and just dropping in the highlight on the lip to keep some form. Putting in that shadow colour. Right. Let's get a little bit of highlight on the side of the mouth here. Thinking about the forms across the top of the cheekbone, down the side of the jowl, more on the head. Still got a very flat area on that forehead. It's going to need much more building across the top of the nose. Where the light source is hitting it across the other uh, cheekbone. You know, a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger on the forehead. And that's starting to build, yeah, it's starting to build a little bit more form in those big flat areas. So I'm just starting to build up those colours slowly, just softening this chin. Okay, zooming in and out to get a better picture of my overall painting. Sometimes artists flip them either side. I think I'm thinking here that it's, the face is quite long. 
one of the eyes is a little bit more open than the other eye. So I've got my lasso tool again, and I'm going to make big changes. And this just happens sometimes. So I'm going to move this up. The nose is too long. Get my selection tool. And I'm just nudging with the arrow keys, the face up, making the nose less long. Then I deselected it. Just move it across a bit. So select, deselect, if you're not sure. When I think I'm happy with it, so I'm looking at the length, how long the nose is, particularly compared to the forehead. I can deselect it. And then I'm just going to have to create it. That looks better. I don't want the, the neck really long, obviously. So now I've got to grab the whole body area, grab my selection tool, and I'm just going to, with my arrow keys, I'm going to nudge all of that up. She's got a long, quite a long neck as it is. So I'm just going to pull all of that up. And then I select, deselect. And now I need to correct, or just paint over all the little holes I've created just work those out it won't take very long and again it's this a painting so you know it's just keeping that texture putting over the little holes I think if anything we're learning here to have the courage to go back and how quick it is in digital painting to make quite major changes uh, and that's okay I'm just trying to build this artwork up Just dropping in a darker shadow, cast shadow, dropping in a value under the chin, blocking in these areas. That's better. The nose isn't as long. Yeah. So it's having the I guess it's having the courage to do that. Go back into it, keep measuring and analysing. Now one eye is certainly more open than the other eye. I'd like to change that now. So I've got my lasso tool again. I'm just going to draw around that lasso tool. And uh, I'm going to, I think I'm going to edit and then transform and scale because I want to just pull it. Oh, not like that. I need to hold shift down. Let's change slightly in Photoshop. And then I want, I want to keep it the same width, but I want to make it narrower. Then I might, that feels better. And then I might make the iris bigger. When I'm happy, I press enter and then select, deselect. Then I can just paint this in. Again, just grabbing the skin color, the local skin color, and working those values in. And I can come back in time and work more form into this. Okay. It's a bit better. So now I should make this eye iris a little lower. So it's closer to the bottom of the uh, eyelid. So that feels better. One isn't so obvious, not one isn't as obviously more open than the other. And I think in that painting that this helps. But it's still still tweaking. <laughs> His chin need a little bit more roundness here. It's getting a little bit narrow, so softening it. That's a dark value. Just want to build up the shadow, obviously, or form. It's a form shadow. A little bit on that cheekbone, all on the side of this head. So these values just need darkening up again. I think that's what I'm working on now. Just each time making them stronger.
a little bit of highlight. So I'm just constantly color picking in, pulling the chin up a little bit again, then like chins. Constantly working on the values. Adjusting the shape, keeping the flat plane of the chin there. I'm not, I don't think I'm far off now. I've been doing this for a while now, so I think we're nearly finished as a painting. Just pulling a little form into the neck, pulling a little bit of shape into the hair. But yeah, I mean, I think one of the things we've learned today is, you know, to have the courage to go back to into the painting and I've made quite major corrections several times with the lasso tool to try and pull it back together. And if that's what we've learned today, great. You know, we've learned to use the lasso tool more. It's, uh, it's not easy to paint a portrait. So I see these things as exercises, just trying to develop my skills. There's, there's people online that probably do this a lot. Well, it's no probably. There's people online that do this a lot better than I do. But it's just me, my little journey of 2019, to try and do this more and more. And to build up my skills as well. Right, let's put a little bit darker value on, a little bit darkening some of the darker areas again. Building it up again. So I'm building up the darker values again. So I'm thinking about the size of the form. Just working up. A little bit of shape in the lips. Getting a little bit more form with this you know, jowl again around the cheek, softening around that cheek again. Which work I've struggled quite a lot with this chin and the jaw. Just trying to build the form together. Right. Gonna finish off just clarifying these tear ducts a bit, getting a little bit of that red colour into the tear ducts. Just adjusting this one slightly, it's a little bit out there, colour picking in the local area. Grabbing that darker. Drawing in, just drawing in the detail of those tear ducts. Got to make, as long as those eyes are standing out, it's going to rescue me from lots of elements of the drawing. Because hopefully you'll, you'll look at the eyes and you'll communicate with the eyes. Just the last few suggestions around the eyelids and the eyelashes just out on the outsides. Pulling in those iris lines, always to the centre. Those lines should come from the outside, right to the centre of the pupils. And a little bit of cast shadow on the white of the eye, from the eyelid. It's not all the same colour. Put a little bit of shine where it catches the eyelid on either side. And a little bit of highlight on the cheek. 
So looking at the smaller details now. A little bit of form into these nostrils, make sure it's equal to the other side. A little bit more shine on that cheekbone. There's some variation in these eyebrows. We're nearly there. So I'm just going to build, uh, just putting kind of this darker, this darker value into the hair as it just sits around, frames the face, getting a couple of loose strands of hair. Just strengthen that chin. And I'm just going to add some freckles. So I've got a a red, a light, well, that I've picked off the lips. And I'm just going to put in a couple of areas. A little bit of abstraction, different sizes. Spacing should be different. And I'm going to also pick a, a brown as well. So I've got a similar kind of color area because I'm picking off my color palette still and so it just gives a little bit of variation so I've got a red and a brown in there a little bit of skin detail and that's pretty much it so I hope you enjoyed it um I've done a lot of correcting on this image today it was a little bit of a fight um I hope it's been okay because I've, I've recorded the voice afterwards as I said at the beginning <laughs> hope it hasn't been too abstract um if you like, if you're interested in more of this, check out our other videos, but also come and join us in one of our workshops. And you can join us at turnipstarfish.co.uk. Um, thanks for watching, everyone.